Tractor Power is at the third annual Wathen Family Farm Day in Evansville, Indiana. And we're going to take a walking tour of the farm and see their collection of 50 four-wheel drive tractors and over 100 tractors in total on this great Indiana farm. The farm is located just off of Interstate 69. In fact, the exit ramp is right across the street. And if you're ever driving on Interstate 69 in Evansville, Indiana, you might have driven by the farm and seen all these Steiger tractors and Big Buds and Versatiles and other big tractors lined up. I was hoping to do a live stream for Big Tractor Power YouTube from the farm day. Unfortunately, because of the sun and the heat today, my phone overheated twice during the live stream. So we're going to take a walk around the traditional way on camera and take a look at all these great tractors on display. As we start the tour of the farm day, I wanted to give you a bird's eye view of the Wathen Farm so that you could see the span of all the big tractors and farm machinery spread out over the farm day. Over 600 people attended and the Wathen served up a great event with good food and family fun as well as lots of interesting farm equipment. Below us is an area known as the sandbox on the farm. This is where a lot of the classic tractors get a little bit of a workout during the year and I really appreciate the Wathens letting me come up and film some of the historic tractors working ground so that you can see and hear them on Big Tractor Power YouTube, as well as attending the farm during the year, during spring planting and fall harvest to see some of the big tractors at work in their operation that you saw at the beginning of this video. The farm day was definitely well attended, and I know that this video is a little bit long at 47 minutes, but there's so much tractor history to share at the farm. The Wathens have traveled all over the United States and Canada to collect up 50 four-wheel drive tractors. And with that many tractors, this video spends less than a minute on each of the big tractors, which is where my focus is for this particular episode. There are all sorts of other machines and tractors on the farm, over 100, and I simply could not cover them all, but I wanted to highlight some of my favorites, and I think that you will also enjoy seeing them. Thanks to AJ, Chris, and Don for putting on this great event, opening up their farm to people to come see it, and also for sharing it on Big Tractor Power YouTube throughout the year. So let's head over to the sandbox area and get started on the walking tour. Let's take a look at some of the Wathen collection down here on the lower part of the farm. We call this area the sandbox uh, because there's just about a little five acre patch of dirt here and Chris is always very nice to get some of these historic tractors out and work a little ground during the growing season so we can add some new history to Big Tractor Power YouTube. We'll walk around and look at some of the Steigers and the other brands of four-wheel drives that are displayed down here in the sandbox area. Here are two pretty cool tractors from Oliver. We've got an Oliver 2255 and an Oliver 2655. And these are among the largest tractors that Oliver ever offered. The Oliver 2255 was the very last Oliver tractor built in February of 1976. It was powered by a Caterpillar V8 engine. This is a front wheel assist model. These were built from 72 to 76. After the 2255, the silver Field Boss tractors came out um, from White Farm Equipment and replaced this, the Minneapolis Moline and the Cockshut tractors, which were all owned by White. We've got an Oliver 2655. This is actually a Minneapolis Moline built tractor, again, under that White Farm Equipment umbrella. This is an LP model and if I remember what Chris has told me I think there were about 42 of these LP Oliver four-wheel drives offered. You can actually see the yellow Moline paint showing through the tank. A lot of these tractors were painted as one color at the factory and if a dealer called up and needed a tractor right away they would paint it another color to fill that order so there's, there were a lot of interesting things that happened right at that time frame where white farm equipment was transitioning away from Oliver, Moline, and Cockshut. And you just never know what color schemes you're going to find in these tractors. But again, just two really cool Oliver tractors here at the Wathen Farm. 
Here are some homemade four-wheel drive tractors and this one isn't even four-wheel drive. It's made off of an old Euclid dump truck. But it was used to pull some tillage equipment at one time and Chris likes collecting these homemade tractors. Probably a lot of horsepower for, for a farm at one time coming out of this old Euclid dump truck. Here's some information. We've got some cards around the exhibit here. So this is kind of a Euclid tractor. And then we've got another one called the Wampus Cat over here. Made by Freddie Schultz. It's got a 250 Cummins in it. And again, a homemade four-wheel drive tractor. Before the company started building four-wheel drive tractors, a lot of farmers kind of took it into their own hands to get a tractor with more traction and power. The Wathens farm with several of these tractors and their farming operation. One of those tractors is this Designation 6 Versatile. It's a model 876. This one was built just after Ford acquired Versatile and you can see it has the Ford oval up here. I've always heard the story that in 1989 some of the Ford executives went through the Sun Belt Ag Expo and were looking at all the tractor companies and they were all one color. Case IH was all red, John Deere green. And they decided, you know, why are we offering blue row crop tractors and red and yellow and black four-wheel drives? So they decided to paint them all blue for model year 1990. So it's always neat to see a tractor like this that's from that transition period. Here's an REO Speedwagon Gold Comet. Very nice looking truck. Take one more look at the Versatile and the Wampus Cat and the Olivers and the Euclid. We'll walk down here and look at some of the Steigers. These are Steigers in a variety of colors. Here is a Spirit of 76 Turbo Tiger 2. Someday this will get restored back to its original colors. One of the great things about this collection is it saved a lot of history from the scrapyard and we can look around at all the different ages of Steigers here. There's 50 years of Steiger history on this farm. But the Turbo Tiger 2 in the red, white, and blue colors, there were only 37 of them made. Uh, most were Series 2 models built in late 1975 for the bicentennial year of 76. It's got a 903 Cummins in it and there were only 37 painted in the red, white, and blue colors. And we're going to see a very rare red, white, and blue out of that 37 models made uh, later in our tour of the farm. Here is the Pink Panther. This is originally, this tractor was painted pink. It came out of Oklahoma. And the story goes that a race car driver ordered this tractor for his farm. And green is not seen as a lucky color in racing. So they had the Pink Panther made. It was a popular movie in the 70s and cartoon series. You can see this pink paint right here showing through on the fender as it's faded. Wear points on the tractor climbing up the steps. You can see that pink paint on the grab rails and the Wathens plan to eventually restore this back to its original paint of pink. There are actually pictures out there of this tractor new in front of the Steiger factory in Fargo, North Dakota where it is all painted in pink. It's pretty cool and I really hope that the Wathens get to restore this back to its color of pink. And we'll just walk quickly over to this side and you can see up here on this grab rail it's almost all pink and again you can see on the fenders that pink paint showing through and hopefully someday we'll get to see this tractor disking up some ground out here in Evansville here's an Alice Chalmers 440 this was built by Steiger for Alice Chalmers uh, this one is a white cab model later models had an orange cab they were built based on the Steiger Bearcat model it's got that triple nickel Cummins V8 in it. 
these white cab models were known as land handlers to go along with the 220 and 210s that were built in the early 70s and then the acoustic cab models came out in the 7000 series and they transitioned over orange cabs to match those one of my favorite tractors in this collection is the Steiger Cougar 2 it's a co-op model though and Steiger built these co-op tractors in orange for co-op implements in Canada I believe that there were 68 dealers in Canada that were registered for co-op implements and not all of them sold Steiger so there were this is a pretty rare tractor to actually see anymore it's got the Caterpillar engine in it and we're looking forward to filming this here in the near future and featuring on big tractor power co-op implements also distributed Deutz Far tractors in orange and Volvo tractors and Volvo combines in a variety of implements a lot of history here with this co-op Cougar 2. Here's a Panther KP1360, better known as a Panther 1000. This is one of the main tractors used on the farm. It's often pulling the Landall disc that the farm has. Another tried and true tractor of the farm that they use out in the field is this Steiger Panther 3, an ST325. Steiger introduced Series 3 in 1976 on January 17th in Florida at their dealer meeting and this was among their best selling models was the Panther 3. We've got a Turbo Tiger 2. These were built for a two year period in the mid 70s. 74 and 75 were the big years for the Series 2 models and this was the biggest Series 2 at 320 horsepower and I hope to be able to film this tractor out working very soon because I really like Series 2. Here's the farm's two corn planters. They've got a, well actually this is the bean planter. This is a 1631 Kinsey and then they've got a 24 row Kinsey as well that is pulled by a Steiger Puma that we'll walk up here and see. You can see people are out enjoying a hay ride and a tour of all the tractors here at the farm day. So here's the main planter tractor on the farm. It's a Puma 1000. This is a 168 horsepower tractor. There are row crop tractors that have more horsepower, but it's a very nimble articulated tractor. You could actually order a front end loader from Steiger to put on this Puma and it pulls the 24 row Kinsey planting a majority of the farm's crop. They also have a 12 row Kinsey that they, is pulled by an International 986. Here's a really cool tractor. It says Steiger Tiger on it. It looks like a Series 1 model. Series 1 was introduced in 1969 and they were the first Steigers built at the Steiger factory in Fargo, North Dakota when they moved away from the Steiger Brothers Dairy Barn. But this is actually a Steiger 2250, and it is known as a barn built. It's one of eight units produced. It's got a 903 Cummins in it, and it came out of Chamberlain, South Dakota. So you can see that it looks very much like any Steiger that you see in the Series 1, but it is actually still built at the Steiger Brothers farm. And another tractor that came from the farm is this Tiger 800. It was the first Tiger with a cat name and it was built at the dairy barn as well. There were 26 Tiger 800s built. This one has been repowered with a Cummins 855 engine but it originally would have had a Cummins 903. So these two tractors took on the styling that we grew to know from the Series 1 Steigers, we saw that Series 2, and they evolved into the threes and the thousands. The barn built models that are most famous have these big V's on their grills. This is a Steiger 3300. This was one of the toughest and largest looking barn built designs, and it was the top end model for the series. You can see it was built in 68 and 69. There were only seven of them built. 
it has the 8V71 Detroit engine and the Clark Power Shift transmission. And the Wathens have serial number four and five of the seven 3300s built. And that's just a really cool looking tractor. And I hope sometime to actually feature that turn over some dirt on big tractor power. One of the tractors that does turn over dirt quite often here on the farm is this Tiger 2200. It's one of 41 2200s built, and it is one of two that came with these large tear tires. It has a nickname of Fatso because of that big tear tire. This one came out of Saskatchewan, Canada. And this is just a really cool tractor I've featured several times on the channel, actually working with that field cultivator. They use it to scratch up dirt and mix sand. The river is not, but probably a half mile behind that corn there. And the water comes up in here and dumps out sand and they mix it up with the 2200 and that Will Rich field cultivator it's hooked on to. Here is a Steiger 1700, another barn built model. They cut these V's into the grill and a very distinctive look. This one has always been unique because you can see it has this red paint under the green and we're not exactly sure why it has so much red, whether that's a primer or it was specially painted red when it was built, but it definitely stands out. Another thing you'll notice on the seven, this 1700 has Steiger cut out in steel and we can look over here at another 1700 that says Steiger all-wheel drive power and it's a decal. So there's even variations among the earliest of the barn series and we can see these two 1700s on display. So that's a tour of just some of the Steigers here on the farm and we'll continue our tour looking at all the equipment International and Case International is definitely a part of the Wathan operation. They've got a very nice 1206 turbo here. And the tractor that plants all the soybeans on this farm is this 7120 Case International Magnum. There's a lot of Steiger history here on the Wathan farm, but there are three very special Steigers. Before us, we have 50 years of Steiger history in one place. To the left is a Steiger 105. It's the first serial number production Steiger from 1961. In the middle, we have an International Harvester 4366. International purchased 20% of Steiger in the early 1970s, and this is serial number one of the International built Steigers. Then we have a 2007-2008 Steiger 535, which was painted in a golden demo color style to celebrate 50 years of Steiger. And here they sit all together. And let's go take a look at each one of these. In the winter of 1957, the Steiger brothers built the first Steiger, nicknamed the Barney, in their dairy barn in Minnesota. When they built that tractor, it was built for heavy tillage. They wanted another high traction articulated tractor to do seating with, and that's where the Model 105 came from. Their neighbors started looking at that 105 and thought they could use something like that too. There were two prototypes built of the 105 and then this first production one built. It's got a 371 Detroit in it. There were only three 105s built and this was hand built by John, Doug and Maurice Steiger at their dairy barn. And from there, all the other Steigers were built. In the 1970s, International Harvester wanted to get into the articulated four-wheel drive market and they contracted with Steiger and actually purchased 20% of the company. And the first tractor off the line was this model 4366. This is serial number one. If you look in the early 4366 brochures from International Harvester, you'll see a 4366 on singles. And I really have to believe that's a tractor in this brochure. And you can see that serial plate right here on the tractor. The early 4366s had a white cab. They were built all the way through 1976, and those later models had a red cab. 
but it's a great piece of Steiger history to have sitting here with a 105. When Steiger celebrated its 50th anniversary in the fall of 2007, Case IH announced that they would offer 50 golden demo styled 535 Steigers in model year 2008. You can see it got a special 50 years of Steiger decal and a gold paint job that replicated the golden demo tractors built by International Harvester during the 56 and 26 series production in the early 1970s. There was also a gold hooded Magnum celebrating 20 years of Magnum production that came out in the same time frame. There were 100 gold Magnums and 50 gold Steigers and each of those tractors has a special hand signed letter from Randy Baker, the Chief Executive Officer of Case IH on the door of each golden tractor. There's a lot of history in these Steiger tractors. They have now been produced for over 60 years. An interesting quick fact is that a lot of people know them as the red Case IH Steigers. Case IH acquired Steiger back in 1986 and they've been painted red ever since then and they've actually been produced in the Case IH red longer than they have now been in the Steiger green. But they're all classics and it's a lot of great history all shared right here on the Wathen Farm. There are two historic four-wheel drive tractors parked here at the entrance of the Wathen family farm and let's take a look at both of them. The first one is a Steiger Cougar ST270 Series 3 model. Series 3 Steigers were introduced on January 17, 1976 at the Florida dealer meeting and in that year there were 37 red white and blue tractors released from Steiger. At least 35 of those are Series 2 tractors, the Turbo Tiger 2, the Panther 2, and the Cougar 2 and we know at least two of them were Series 3. This Cougar as well as a Panther 3 painted up in the bicentennial colors. The interesting thing about the Series 3 models is that they have Spirit of 76 painted on the frame where the Series 2 models did not have this and the farm also has a Spirit of 76 Turbo Tiger 2. The red, white, and blue color scheme really stands out on this tractor. It also has a Steiger blade, which was an option from the company, and that is also painted in the bicentennial blue. This tractor, along with all the other 36 red, white, and blue tractors built, were painted at Walt's Body Shop in Fargo, North Dakota. And this very well may have been the last one painted, or maybe that Steiger Panther 3 in the red, white, and blue colors. It has been said that the company originally planned to have 50 Stars and Stripes tractors, one for each state, but because of the time that it took to mask the three color schemes, it just simply wasn't feasible to make more than the 37 that got painted for the Bicentennial. It's definitely a great all-american tractor and we're gonna walk over here and see another interesting tractor this tractor was built by Chris Wathen's father before we had factory produced four-wheel drive tractors like the Cougar 3 farmers started building their own big tractors with four-wheel drive traction to get more power for tillage and we'll come over here. This tractor is nicknamed the Brute, and we can read a little bit of history down here about it. It's a homemade tractor built by Don Walton in 1970, built on the family farm that we're at here today. The Brute is a four-wheel drive articulated tractor equipped with a GM 671 engine. It also has Clark axles, a Mead cab, and transfer case from a military truck. The hood and fuel tank were custom built. The tractor was later traded for an International 1466 and went missing for 35 years. Don's son Chris uh, tracked down the tractor and brought it back home eight years ago. And now it has been completely restored and painted back to its original condition. 
and I'm looking forward to getting out in the field so that you can see and hear this tractor actually working. And it's really neat that Don was able to actually just build a four-wheel drive tractor to use on their farm. And if you watch Big Tractor Power on YouTube, and there's been a couple of videos of the Wathens working their land with their Big Bud 52550, that's Don Wathen, the builder of this tractor, uh, running that Big Bud out in the field. Wagner is not a name that you really hear a lot about today as far as tractors go, but they were the pioneer in the articulated four-wheel drive tractor. Wagner built a lot of construction and logging equipment out in Oregon. This is a mobile scoop built by Wagner. It's kind of the predecessor to the modern day skid steer loader. You can see it had a one wheel in the back and two drive wheels in the front. But Wagner was building construction equipment like this and started to build some tractors for the forestry industry that caught on in the plains for planting wheat and tilling the ground. We can see the WA4 sitting here. They're kind of small by today's standard for a four-wheel drive, but that was big tractor power in its day in the 1940s and 50s when a 50 horsepower row crop was about as big as you could buy. You can see these are equipped with dozer blades. They'd make pretty good tractor for plowing city sidewalks or streets or driveways today. From the WA4s, the tractors grew up to the 14s. And you can see they kind of have that classic 1940s styling to them. The calves were not big and roomy, but they were very rounded and compact. Again, this would have been a very big tractor for its day. Here we can see a tractor mobile from Wagner. They painted some in orange. This one's kind of cool because it has dual tires and they're turf tires. Can you imagine hooking up an old Jacobson reel mower and running out across a big lawn and cutting grass with something like this? Really, they would have used the turf tires in the slopes of Oregon and Washington to work uh, wheat ground. Here's another 17 with the diamond turf tires on it. And the most unique uh, tractor in the whole Wagner collection, as we see them lined up here, is this WA24. 1968, Wagner signed a contract with John Deere to supply them with WA14 and 17 tractors. And John Deere took a very small run of those tractors and then introduced the John Deere 7020 in 1970. But because the contract had a five-year exclusive on the Wagner tractors, Wagner could not produce their own tractors anymore. And that effectively put the company out of business. After Wagner came the Big Bud tractors, which we'll talk about in our next stop on the tour. But this Rego Wagner WA24 came out in 1972. It's a really cool looking tractor. The WA24 would end up being the largest Wagner built and there were only one of these Rago Wagner tractors. Rago took over Wagner production and focused strictly on construction and only built this one but it's got that hot rod 1970s racing stripe that goes all the way around the tractor and it just really kind of stands out like those uh, Black Stripe International tractors from 1976 and I really hope sometime to be able to see this tractor out in the field so that you can see and hear it running. But that's just a short tour of the Wagners and a little history on the company. We just took the tour of the Wagner tractors and learned about their history and their ultimate end when they partnered up with John Deere to produce the WA 17 and 14 tractors. The largest Wagner dealer in the country was owned by a gentleman named Willie Hensler. When he did not have a tractor to sell anymore, he began working with his shop foreman, Bud Nelson, to create the Big Bud tractor. In 1969, the first Big Bud, the HN250, rated at 250 engine horsepower, came out. We can see one here in the Wathen collection on triples. The HN in the model number stands for Hensler Nelson. And 500 Big Bud tractors were built between 19 69 all the way up to 1991 the world's largest tractor as a big bud 
It is the Big Bud 16V747, owned by Robert and Randy Williams of Big Sandy, Montana. It's rated at 1,100 horsepower. Other big, big buds were rated at 740 horsepower, 650 horsepower, and they really stood out in the 70s and 80s. This HN 250 is a little different because it has triple tires. Most of them had a single tear tire or duals. And this has an optional extended fuel tank in the center of the rear rims. We can see over here on this other big bud, the later series two has those same rims, but no additional fuel tank. Pretty rare option on the HN 250. Here's the later Series 2 styling of the Big Bud. We can see it has a grill that is similar to what came out on the Series 3 in 1979. And you can see how Series 1 looked. Series 2 and then Series 3. And I have a feeling that maybe we'll get to see a Series 4 end up here someday. This 52550 was completely restored back in 2007. The Wathen family worked to take this tractor from just a frame with no wheels and no engine to make it a field worthy tractor. This tractor does a lot of soil finishing in the spring every year out here on the Ohio River flats. It's rated at 550 horsepower. 525 is that horsepower rating. 50 means it has an automatic transmission. And it's a really cool tractor to see and hear at work. You can see it's got the power shift. And if you check out Big Tractor Power YouTube, I've got several videos of this big bud working out in the field. The farm uses a Case IH 2588 combine. It runs a 36 foot wide McDon header for soybeans and they have an eight row corn head that they run with it and the Puma 1000 runs that Demco 850 grain cart. This is a 30th anniversary axle flow. So even a little bit of history in the farm's combine. You can see that special 2007, 30 years of axle flow technology decal. Here's a unique four-wheel drive tractor that is not an articulating model. This is a Coleman tractor. You might know the name Coleman for the front wheel assist axles that they produce for International Harvester and Minneapolis Moline. They had kind of a pumpkin style drive that we can see underneath this tractor. This is powered by a 525 cubic inch International Harvester engine. So they definitely had a tie to IH as they looked at building their own four-wheel drive tractor. They actually produce literature. If you can find Coleman literature on this four-wheel drive, it's very rare and the real tractor is even rarer. They were kind of painted a sky blue color. This one is fairly rusty, but it's great that at least one yet survives to see what they look like. Starting in 1977, Steiger began building four-wheel drive tractors for Ford. The company offered blue Steiger-built tractors through 1982. In total, they built four models, the FW20, the 30, the 40, and the 60. The FW40 is the rarest of all the tractors. It was introduced in 1978 and only produced in 1978, and it's really neat to see an FW40 sitting here on the Wathen farm. These were powered by a Cummins 903 engine. You can see it has a three point hitch option. The FW series Steigers were built on the Steiger PT frame. The PT Steigers offered PTO and they also use the same style frame and they had this kind of longer hood than the ST models. There were PTA Steigers which had an automatic transmission. I'm always looking and trying to find some of these Ford FWs 
out in the field and hopefully we'll get to see a few down the road working up some ground. Next to the Ford FW40 is another Steiger 3300. This was the largest of the barn belt series in the late 60s. This is one of seven built and the Watkins have serial number four and five of the 3300s and they're just really cool big tractors. This one needs a little more help. It doesn't currently have an engine where the other one that we saw down in the sandbox area does have its engine and is up and running. Again, half the battle is finding one of seven tractors to even have or have the hope of restoring. The farm really enjoys collecting and saving tractors and there are some that need a little more help than others. Uh, way off there in the trees you can see a Steiger Turbo Tiger 2, a Wagner WA-17. This is another one of the Steiger 3300s parked back here. Some older Molines and Internationals. We've got two international tractors built by Steiger. Uh, this one here is believed to be the last 4568 built. As we saw earlier in our tour, the farm has serial number 14366. And here is the 4568. This tractor was built through 1976 and was replaced by the 4586 that year and it is believed that this is possibly the very last 68 built. And we can see there is a donor tractor part next to it for parts to help it get up and running and hopefully we'll see this out in the field turning some dirt. Several other older pieces of iron out here. We've got an industrial 1700. Another one of the barn belt tractors. And another one of the green 1700s on display. I know a lot of people comment when they see these tours of the farm, you know, why are they rusty or, you know, a lot of them went into retirement or were not well cared for, but it's great that the Wathen family has taken the time to collect these and preserve their history so they don't end up in a scrap yard. And hopefully over time, many of them will be restored and put back to their classic looks. But half the battle is just finding these rare tractors to even have that chance to restore them and I really appreciate what the Wathens have done to preserve tractor history. There's some industrial equipment at the farm as well. We can see a Case Uni 1845C skid steer here and then we've got an international dozer with the scoop on the front and a big Euclid twin engine dozer. The blade is uh, stored inside the shed and this was used out in California to build the interstate system there. It's definitely a massive dozer. We've got another international dozer with the blade on the front of it and a Michigan wheel loader. Definitely some big pieces of construction iron. Let's take a look at some of the other tractors that are here on display that the farm utilizes. And the first one is a 1976 International 1566. It has a hydro swing mower on it, and that is used to maintain all the waterways here on the farm and mowing them down. The Blackstripe 1566s are always cool tractors to see, and we're probably a half mile, a mile away from the Ohio River right here at the farm and there are a lot of different banks and things to maintain that flow into the, the river and that hydro swing mower on the 1566 is definitely a handy tool to have on the farm. Here's a pretty rare tractor, it's a Jackson 444. There were only 16 of these built and it's another rare item in the Wathen collection. And we'll have a full feature video on this tractor actually disking it would not normally be hooked up to a grain cart, 
because it does not have PTO but it is just displaying the grain cart today the Steiger Puma that we saw earlier that pulls a planter pulls this 850 Demco grain cart in the fall over here is the farms international 986 tractor it plants with a 12 row Kinsey planter along with that Puma 1000 and the 24 row Kinsey in the spring it's a nice looking 986 and a classic Kinsey 12 row also just parked over here on the corner is the farms Landall 6230 disc and a brilliant packer typically that disc is hooked up to the Panther 1000 sometimes the Panther 3 we'll walk up to the other part of the farm and see some more of the four-wheel drives that are part of the collection and the farm the Wathen family has farmed along the Ohio River since the 1930s and they first relied on farm old tractors to work their land out here on the river flats here we can see one of the earliest farmals with the classic red wheels and the gray coloring the international harvester red came along later you can see they've got a neat two-way plow on the back of this f20 you can see another steel wheeled farmal here this one has a wide front and you can see here they've even got scrapers on it to help keep mud off of it when they're working out on the flats you can see this one is an H set up with cultivators again that classic regular wide front we've got a 1950 Farmal M that was purchased by Ivan Wathen on June 29th 1950 and it has never left the Wathen farm and it's seen a lot of service but it's still looking pretty good we can walk back here and see some Fords that are on the farm we've got a Ford Jubilee with front wheel assist that's a little bit of a rarer option on a Ford and of course the ever popular Ford 8N and some more of those early style farmal tractors that were used here on the farm they're very basic compared to today's magnums and steigers but they were a lot better than standing behind a horse and again you can see those unique plows hooked up on the back of these Minneapolis Moline tractors have been a big part of the Wathen farm at one time they were the tractors working the land out here along the Ohio River today they're part of the collection the first one in the lineup is a G1350 Minneapolis Moline built from 1969 through the 1971-72 time frame this is actually the serial number 2 G1350 and it's a liquid propane model you can see that LP tank right up there behind the steering wheel so it did not use diesel or gasoline it used liquid propane and we'll get a shot of this actually running around the farm so that you can hear and see it running you can tell it's an early model because it has what is known as the bubble nose those early models had this nose that stuck out they had the white name on the front for white farm equipment the parent company of Minneapolis Moline Oliver and Cockshut later models kind of mid-year 71 got a squared out grill and did not have the nose it actually said MM up in this area and that carried over to the G1355 that replaced this in late 1972 we come over here we've got a Wheatland G1000 Wheatland tractors have rounded fenders to help the dust kind of slide over the tractor and they have a standard axle underneath them you can see here on the g1350 it's got a row crop style axle in a squared off uh, fender again this is an lp model you can see that round tank just in front of the steering wheel here is a uh, 707 and it has uh, the wheatland fenders again LP model 
the standard axle. See the G707 decal there. Moline decals. And again, that LP tank. This was made during the MoTeC years before White Farm Equipment came along. And you can see it has that brown engine and chassis where the later models were all energy yellow. Then we also have a Wheatland GVI here and it has uh, the LP power as well. But these were all big iron tractors from Minneapolis Moline. And in 1974, the Moline energy yellow began to fade away in favor of the silver white field bosses from White Farm Equipment, which again was the parent company of Minneapolis Moline. you've enjoyed the tour of the third annual Wathan Family Farms Day. It's always exciting to visit this farm in Evansville, Indiana and see all this historic equipment and to share it with you on Big Tractor Power and we'll look forward to the fourth annual Farm Day coming up next year. It's really exciting to share all this history with you and Big Tractor Power YouTube will be catching more of these classic four-wheel drives out in the field here along the Ohio River Flats and sharing their history with you so that you can see and hear them at work. As always, thank you for watching and if you would like to subscribe to Big Tractor Power, you'll see over 1,000 videos of farm machinery in action and if you're already a subscriber, make sure to check the channel homepage often as new videos are uploaded every two to three days and if you'd like to get a preview of what's coming to the channel next, make sure to follow Big Tractor Power on Instagram where I share pictures and short video clips of what's currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.